Let's talk about solving one variable equations. Solving a one variable equation is basically doing, for real, the joke of algebra, finding x. So, when we come across an equation with a variable, what is the value of said variable? That's what we're going to find out in this video. But first, why? What is the point of finding it in the first place? We don't just solve it for no reason, after all. Well, finding the value of a variable in an equation is useful in intermediate and advanced fields of work, such as warehousing, chemical and metallurgical industries, mining, engineering, physical science, computer programming, and business management. It can assist in inventory management, chemical and ingredient mixing, software expression building, data processing, and many others. So, let's now move on to the how portion. Despite how intimidating these might look at first, we're going to take a look at how to do them step by step, approaching them one piece at a time. I have found that four major steps are necessary to solve for the variable's number. The first is to address the parentheses. Next, we need to move the like terms to either side of the equation. Then we simplify all the terms down into one single term on each side. And finally, we divide both sides by the coefficient. After that, we will know what the value of the variable is in order to make the equation true. First things first, I want to explain how the equal sign is a kind of barrier. One thing you hear is that you have to keep the equation balanced. This makes sense. After all, the equal sign indicates that both sides are identical. But it becomes more fuzzy when you look at a larger equation especially with a variable in there. Why can't we just, say, move a term across the equal sign? Or for that matter, just remove a term we don't need? Let me explain using one of the most basic equations of all time. 2 plus 2 equals 4. This is pretty simple. We all know this. 2 plus 2 is the same as 4, since they add up to the same value. You can even think of elementary school questions like they're the equations we're tackling. 2 plus 2 equals what? Or x. We're trying to find the value of this. What does x equal? Well, it's 4. So, let's say we want to move a number to the other side. Or just remove a term entirely from one side. What's stopping us? Well, first, let's just try removing a term. So instead of 2 plus 2 equals 4, let's remove a 2. But we're left with 2 equals 4. But 2 doesn't equal 4. So there's a problem. It's no longer equal. That's why we can't just remove a term from an equation. Well, what about moving a term across the equal sign? Let's try that. So we'll grab this and move it over here. Now let's simplify this. 4 plus 2 is the same as 6. Hmm, that's still not right. That's why we can't just move terms across the equal sign. Think of the equal sign as a mirror. If you do one thing on one side, the same thing happens on the other. So let's add, say, 3 to the equation. But we have to do the same thing on the other side because this is mirrored over here. And now let's simplify it down to its most basic terms. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. And 4 plus 3 is also 7. Well, now it's equal. We did the same thing on both sides, and it's still equal. We can use this technique to move terms across the equal sign. Let me explain. Let's move the 2 across. So we want to get rid of it on the left side. To do that, we simply make it redundant. Any number minus itself equals 0. So we'll do that to minus 2. But we also have to mirror what we do. So we'll put minus 2 on the other side. So basically, we can eliminate the original 2. This basically adds up to 0. And now we can continue to simplify this down 
2 plus 0 is, well, 2. And 4 minus 2 is 2. So the reason why we can't simply remove terms or move them across the equal sign is that doing so would make the equation unequal and therefore false. This remains true, even with larger, more complicated equations with variables in them. Okay, so let's start with a really simple equation. x plus 2 equals 4. I mean, it's pretty obvious. x equals 2. So why are we doing this in the first place? Because I want you to get a good understanding of how to do it with something that is easy to grasp. We'll look at the steps with something that is very simple to understand before moving on to something more complicated. So, what is our first step? Well, first we need to see if there are any parentheses. There are no parentheses. Next, we need to check and see if both sides have the same variables. Are all the like terms on the proper sides? In this case, there's not. We got a variable term here, and we got a regular number here, as well as a regular number over here. So, I want to leave this variable alone, and I want to move this one over here. So, how do we do that? Well, we did this earlier, in which we just removed 2 from here, and did the same thing. We mirrored it on this side. So this cancels out to 0, and 4 minus 2 is simply 2. So x equals 2. If we put it back in that equation, so x plus 2 equals 4. If we put, if we replace x with 2, 2 plus 2 equals 4. It is correct. Okay, now let's move on to another one. So in this one, we want to figure out the value of x. And this time, we see that this one has what is called a coefficient. And basically, this number basically says we multiply the value of this variable by this number. And so how do we simplify it? How do we get it down to its basics? Well, what we want to do is get it down to x equals a number. We don't want to have 3x or 4x or half an x. We want this number, and that's it. What times 3 equals 12? So to get rid of this, we simply divide by the coefficient. Anything divided by itself equals 1. And 1x is basically equivalent to just x. So if we do this, 3x divided by 3, we have to mirror it on this side so that the equation stays equal. So we'll divide by 3. And so we're left with 1x, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So 1x is basically just x, and x equals 4. So 3x, or in this case, 4, equals 12. So basically what this means is 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is what? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And 12 equals 12, so we know we got the right answer. Moving on to something like this, I want to start doing something different. When it comes to equations like these, one thing that helps me really to simplify these, especially when doing this on pen and paper, or in this case a notepad, is to combine the terms with their operators. So in this case we have plus 3x and plus 6, and we can also, because these are not negatives, we can simply put a plus sign in front of them. And these just indicate the terms. There's no weird operations in here, it's just positive 2, positive 3, positive 19, positive 6. And then if there are any minus signs, so if we were to have, say, 1 minus 1, we would have positive 1 and negative 1. To me, it's just easier. As far as I know, this works only with addition and subtraction. I don't know how it would go over with uh, multiplication and division. But in this case, we're working only with positive and well, just positive in this case, so it doesn't really matter. So, 
let's go over our four steps. Are there any parentheses in here? No, we don't have to worry about those. Are all the like terms on the proper sides? Yes, they are. We've got two variable terms on this side and two regular terms on this side. Okay. Are they simplified? No, we have two terms on one side and two terms on the other. So let us simplify these. So 19 plus 6 equals what? It equals 25. And what about this? I mean, would these get in the way? That seems a bit complicated. What do we have to do? Fortunately, well, nothing. These are basically here to indicate that they represent the variable but you add them together as normal. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So it's plus 5x. Okay, so, but now we have the coefficient here. We want to get this down to 1 in order to get the raw value of x. So let's divide, like we did before, by the coefficient. So 5x divided by 5 and 25 divided by 5. So this goes down to just x. And 25 divided by 5 is, of course, regular 5. x equals 5. So let's put 5 in where these are. So 2 times 5 plus 3 times 5 equals 19 plus 6. So let's simplify this. 19 plus 6 is just 25. And using the order of operations, we'll do 2 times 5 first, which is 10. And 3 times 5 is 15. And 10 plus 15 is 25. And 25 equals 25. So the equation works. We're all good. Now we're moving into a little more complicated territory. Because we're adding other steps and we're seeing subtraction here and negative numbers. So like I did before, I'm just going to combine all the terms with their operators. So we just get the actual terms as opposed to everything being separated by the operators. OK, so what is wrong here? Do we see any parentheses? Well, no. But we do see that the like terms are not together on each side. We have one variable term on this side and one on this side, and we have one regular term on this side and one on this side. So we need to move these over. So how do we do that? Well, remember what we did with 2 plus 2. We simply make these redundant. So any number minus itself will give the same result. So negative 6 minus negative 6, basically it just translates into plus 6. And so we put plus 6 over here as well, and that gets rid of that. But I want to show you a shortcut. What works for me every single time, and will save you probably a lot of headache, is simply just move the term over. But instead of it being as it is over here, you simply invert the operator. So in this case, negative 6 goes over to plus 6. And if this were positive 6, it would move to, it would be negative 6 over here. And of course, after we move it over, we have to get rid of it. Otherwise, the equation will no longer be equal. OK, and we'll do the same thing with this one. And the process for the variable terms is pretty much the same. So this is negative 8x. So we're just going to do positive 8x and get rid of it on this side. OK, so now we got all the like terms on each side. So let's add these together. What is 27 plus 6? It is 33. And what is 3 plus 8? It is 11x. OK, and we'll divide by 11. So this is now just regular old x. And 33 divided by 11 is simply 3. So x should equal 3. So let's get rid of this. And we'll substitute x for 3 times 3 minus 6, and negative 8 times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. And 9 minus 6 is simply 
3. And negative 8 times 3 is simply negative 24. And negative 24 plus 27 equals 3. So the equation works out perfectly. Okay, now things are getting a little more complicated. This one doesn't look like it's going to be a whole lot of fun. So, how do we handle this? Well, first we address the parentheses. Okay, so what do we do? I mean, it looks pretty confusing. What is this crap? Well, basically, what we have to do with this is simply take each of the terms inside and multiply them by the number outside. So in this case, it's plus 1x and negative 29 and positive 2 over here and over here, positive 5, negative 2x and positive 46. So at this point, we might as well try using the calculator, not because we really, really have to, but just because in this case, with there being larger numbers, it'll be a little more convenient. I'm going to go in a new line here to handle this one first. So what is 1? times 2. Well, first of all, this one is being multiplied by a regular number. So what about the variable? Fortunately, we don't have to worry about it. We simply do the multiplication as normal. Basically, ignore this x. Think of it as just some little tail on the number that you don't really have to worry about until it comes time to dividing by the coefficient. So. What is 2 times 1? It is 2. In this case, it's positive 2. And it is a variable term, so let's add the variable. And then 2 times negative 29. Let's move over to the calculator. 2 times 29 negative is negative 58. Negative 58. And so we did the parentheses. So now what? What do we do with this? Well, we simply can replace it with these numbers. So positive 2x and negative 58. Now let's move on to the next one. 5 and negative 2x and 46. So it's 5 times negative 2. It would be negative 10x. And the reason why it's negative is that if you multiply a positive number by a negative number, it will give a negative result. If you multiply positive by positive, of course, you get positive. And if you multiply negative by negative, you'll also get positive. But if there's one and the other, it will always be negative. OK, so what about 5 times 46? Well, let's go ahead and use the calculator again just to make it easier. 5 times 46 is equal to 230. And it's positive because it's a positive times a positive. So now we can get rid of this and do negative 10x and positive 230. So let's get rid of this now. OK, now we're seeing something that looks a little more doable. So what next? Well, let's look and see if we got all the like terms on the proper side. And we don't. We got a variable term here and a variable term on the other side. And we have a regular number here and a regular number here. So let's move these terms to where they're supposed to be. I want to move this over here. So we simply invert it. It's negative. So we just do positive 10x, and we get rid of it over here. And here we have negative 58. So let's just move it over here, and it's negative. So it's going to be positive 58. And now all our like terms are on the proper sides. So let's simplify them. 2 plus 10 is. 12 and 230, which we still have over here, plus 58 is 288. Okay, so now we divide by the coefficient. So this will be divided by 12, and this will be divided by 12. This goes down to x, and 288 divided by 12 is 24. Okay. So x is 24. Let's see how that works. Let's get the original equation in. And we'll do this 24 over here and 2 times 24. So now we're going to actually have a much easier time. 
we don't have to use a distributive property now because all the terms are regular numbers. We don't have mixed variables with numbers. All we need to do is just the order of operations inside of the parentheses and then work our way out. So what's negative two times 24? It is negative 48 plus 46 is negative two. And five times negative two is negative 10. What's 24 minus 29? I'm too lazy, so I'm gonna use a calculator. 24 minus 29 is negative five. And two times negative five is negative 10. The answer works out perfectly. Onward and upward. This is going to be quite the ride, but we're not doing anything new. This simply looks a lot more complicated than it is, but using the proper techniques that we have learned, we can tackle this step by step. Right now it looks really intimidating, but let's figure out what the value of x is. First things first, let's address the steps. Do we have any parentheses? Yes, we do. So let's move down to another line and get rid of that using the distributive property. First, I'm just gonna simplify that by combining all the terms with their operators for simplicity's sake. Okay, so now we got two times 26.98 negative is negative 53.96 and that's a regular number so we'll leave it alone and then we'll do 2 times 1.57 negative is negative 3.14 and that's a variable term and now we'll get rid of the parentheses and we'll add negative 53.96 and negative 3.14x all right Moving on to this parenthesis over here. So negative six times 2.08 negative is 12.48 variable term, and that's positive. And now negative six times 4.635 equals negative 27.81. That is not a variable term. So now let's move these over. Positive 12.48x and negative 27.81. Okay. Now let's check and see if they're all on the right side and they're not all the like terms are on the wrong side. So let's try to move these over. So we got negative 53.96. Let's move that over here and make it positive positive 53.96 we'll get rid of that this is the variable term this is not so we'll put it over here and this is going to be negative 33.15 and we'll get rid of that over here and we'll move the variable terms over here so we'll move this negative 12.48 x get rid of that this is not a variable term but this is so positive 1.08x and this is another variable term and so it's going to be positive 14.26x and we'll get rid of it over here okay now let's go ahead and simplify these down to single terms so 3.14 negative minus 12.48 plus 1.08 plus 14.26 is equal to negative 0.28x. Okay, and we'll add these together. So 27.81 negative plus 5396 minus 33.15 is negative 7. 
okay and we'll divide by the coefficient now this is a part I got to bring up because it might seem complicated and confusing we're dividing by this number to get 1x but it's true any number any at all divided by itself will always every single time equal 1 does it matter if it's a decimal or fraction? Does it matter if it's positive or negative? It can be the most outlandish number you can think of. Pi divided by pi. It will always, every single time, equal 1. Let me prove that. 9 divided by 9. 1. 0.28 divided by 0.28. 1. Negative 0.28 divided by negative 0.28. 1. I don't think pi is on here. Oh well, it's fine. A million divided by one million is one. Every single time, it will always give back one. So that's why we're dividing by negative 0 0.28. And same thing over here, divide by negative 0 0.28. So this is now just x and negative 7 divided by 0.28 negative is 25 awesome we finally got the answer but let's just make sure this is going to take a little while so bear with me here let's replace all these with times 25 times 25 times 25 and we'll scroll over so we can see times 25 are all the variables taken care of as far as I can see yes so let's do this so 1.57 negative we'll combine these with all their operators just to make sure so this is positive. All these are positive 25. Positive 2, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. Positive, negative, positive, and positive. All right. So negative 157 times 25 equals negative 39. 0.25 and 26.98 negative minus 39.25 25 that's going to be minus so that equals negative 66.23 and that we're going to multiply that by 2 we'll get negative 132.46 and then we'll add 33.15 to that and we get negative 99.31 all right so now let's do that in here so 2.08 negative times 25 equals negative 52 plus 4.635 is negative 47.635 and we'll multiply this by negative 6 and we get positive 284.19 and now let's go and use the order of operations so we'll do this so 1.08 negative times 25 equals negative 27 and negative 14.26 times 25 is negative 
56.5. And so now we'll just do this in order because we've got only addition and subtraction. 284.19 minus 27 minus 356.5 equals negative 99.31. They are the same. Lastly, I want to teach you about solving for one variable inequality expressions. So an inequality expression differs from solving for a one variable uh, equation in the sense that one side is going to be greater than the other and there are others that are greater than or equal to the other but we're really looking for the difference between the two primarily. Every single situation except if the coefficient is a negative number in which case this will simply be flipped. So let me show you. So we have to divide by the coefficient so we'll divide by negative 4 and we mirror that over here divide by negative 4 and so we get 1x or just plain x and 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3 but we have to flip this around so x should be less than negative 3 and let's put that to the test here so let's put the original equation back in and we'll substitute x for something that is less than negative 3 so because it's a negative number it will look like it's increasing but that's just because we're going lower on a negative number graph so we'll do something like negative 5 so we have to multiply by that let's just use a calculator to prove that so if, if this is greater than 12 so if it's anything greater than 12 we know that this is true so let's do negative 4 times negative 5 and we get 20 which is larger it is greater than 12 so it holds true and to prove that it must be this we'll do something that is greater than negative 3 so let's just do positive 3 and I'll do that with a plus just to indicate uh, and if this is true then we got a problem but if it's false then this still holds up so let's do negative 4 times regular 3 so it it should be less than 12 and it is it is negative 12 let's just do this again so negative 4 times let's say something that is greater than negative 3 um, we'll do 1 we get negative 4 but that still doesn't line up because negative 4 is not greater than 12 so we see that this is true and that is why we have to flip the sign if we do a negative coefficient. So I hope this helped you guys get a better understanding of how to solve one variable equations and inequality expressions. I know that this stuff is not easy so here's hoping this lesson helped you all out. Anyway thank you guys for watching.